So you had just mentioned the jihadis, and I and I want to get into that because I think young people, kind of as we talked about a moment ago, who certainly weren't alive, maybe fail to understand what you're talking about when you're talking about jihadis and how they're different than maybe what people perceive as a standard enemy. So can you explain to the audience the difference between a loyalist to the regime and someone who is a violent jihadi terrorist? Yeah, when you look at the loyalists to the regime, they had, you know, their first thing was their country and everything else. Granted, they were, you know, not the most, uh, you know, not that their country was Iraq wasn't run smooth. It was a dictatorship, you know, everything else going on within there. But it was still about Iraq and everything else. Um, so there was some loyalty just as a country. But with the the folks coming in, the religious fundamentalists, you know, they were they're out just to kill Christians and because they hate, you know, Christians. Uh, and it really stinks because of the fact that for them, it was like, well, the great jihad is now called to basically go to war because, you know, now it's like they've got to get rid of, you know, the uh, all us Christians and everybody else, just the the folks in the Middle East that aren't supposed to be there in their mind. And so it was kind of their call to arms worldwide. And we ran into folks, you know, all over that we've either captured or killed that were definitely not from Iraq. Um, so it's, you know, different. I mean, it's it's just a crazy thing, but it was really a call call to arms. We we hit a uh, a safe house one time uh, in 03, October, yeah, 31st, actually, 03, um, when we were in Baghdad, and we went all the way out to our Ramadi. And the guys all had the same jogging pants, shoes, and everything. And what they had done is they, they come over there for the jihad, so they take their passports and they can't leave. So now they've got control of them, and they can't leave the country. So they kind of get them in on this whole thought, oh, yeah, you're going to come in, you're going to do this, you're going to – and then all of a sudden they take them, and then they just – they start, you know – kind of like just keeping them uh, to do what they need them to do and talking them into other things and, and so forth. And some of them, you know, some of them are all about it. I don't know. Just crazy. When you would get into uh, gunfights and engagements with those guys, I mean, were they competent fighters? Were they skilled in any way? Or were they just kind of idiots who got their hands on an AK and had this sadistic mindset? I mean, were they able to put up a really good fight? I think, um, you know, you had some like anything that had some experience and then some that were just coming over there wanting to get their jihad and then get, they would get whatever training, uh, when they, you know, either arrived in the country before they came directly into Iraq. Uh, so whatever the rat line was, but as we progressed down the road, you know, they started having experienced fighters and they started doing their lessons learned. So it became, um, a a more hardened fighter, especially with ISIS, you know, I mean, they were a ruthless ruggedized military in a way. So, um, you know, they, they definitely had some, uh, war hardened individuals. Did you feel when you're fighting the jihadis, the people that are intent on killing, you know, the Christian members of the Christian faith, people that they, uh, didn't feel belong there. Did it feel more justified to you? Did it feel like it was more important maybe than fighting, um, again, the regime loyalist, because, and I'm only speaking for myself here, when I see that level of barbaric behavior, and you're talking about Zarqawi chopping people's heads off and, and people drilling holes into other people's skulls, I see that as a guy who's just some bystander, and I say, that's not even human behavior. That, that's right. what rabid dogs do, and I would think, I would much rather prefer to take them out, and it would feel better for me, again, as an unbiased observer, than just the standing Iraqi army. Did you feel the same way or was it equal to you? Yeah, I think because things, you know, transitioned from that regime side to that fundamentalist side. So um, we also had to change some of our tactics and our procedures and everything else and how we did things to cope with these guys because they were coming up with some ingenious ways of doing things along the line as well with some of the IEDs, some of the, you know, the booby trapping the the houses, things like that, using the cell phones to call to detonate everything. Um, so it became, I think, as much as you say, more violent in that way, because with the regime guys too, we knew that there was a, the end state was trying to get Saddam so that we needed intel as well. We needed to gather that intelligence. There was only so much that was there uh, from previous, uh, you know, just historical data. Then we had them act- actually making it, make it real intel and workable intel. Um, but with the fundamentalists, you know, they, uh, if you gave them a chance to vote and we'd say vote based off, okay, 
does this guy want to just, is he going to go along with the capture or is he wanting to fight? And then let's, let's see who wins, you know, um, they would rather fight than do anything. There was, you know, so many times guys would detonate suicide, suicide vests because it's like, well, they're not going to take me clack themselves off thinking they're killing, you know, other folks around them. Um, but you know, they just, I don't know. They just were different folks. And it was like, we had to get more violent in a way, you know, because again, we were going after Intel and doing things and, and our procedures and t everything on the battlefield just had to kind of adjust just like they were doing. That's crazy. I, I truly cannot imagine. And I, you know, I was in college. Um, I started college in what, 2010. So I was in high school when things were getting kind of real bad in the 06, 07 era. And I remember people would always talk about like, you know, do we really need to be fighting these guys? Do, are they really that bad? And I'm like, you know, this Zarqawi guy is literally chopping people's heads off, right? And don't think it stops there. Like if this guy yeah. could, he'd chop all of our heads off too. Fortunately, they dropped a couple bombs on him, I believe, if I recall correctly.